Hello and welcome to Electrology. If you're passionate about electrical engineering and learning about power systems, you're in the right place. Today, we'll dive deep into distance protection, a vital concept in the protection of transmission lines. By the end of this video, you'll understand how distance relays work, their principle and the zone-based concept that makes this protection highly reliable. Before we begin, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and click the join button to support us. Now let's get started. Distance protection is a non-unit protection system with significant technical and economic advantages. Unlike phase or neutral overcurrent protection, distance protection has a key feature. Its coverage of faults remains independent of source impedance variations. To understand this better, let's walk through a practical example comparing overcurrent relays with distance protection. Take a look at this figure. Here, we have a transmission line protected by overcurrent relay, connected with circuit breaker at different position, which is responsible for monitoring fault conditions. Now, imagine a fault occurs at point F1, which is on the transmission line. For this setup, the equivalent source impedance, Zs, is equal to 5 ohms. The total impedance up to the fault point would be 9 ohms. Now let's find the fault current at F1. IF1 is equal to 220 into 10 cube divided by root 3 into 9, which is equal to 14,113 amperes. To isolate this fault, only the breaker at point E should trip while keeping the rest of the system energized. In power systems, the goal is to isolate only the faulty section without disturbing healthy sections. Therefore, the setting of the overcurrent relay for the other breakers should be higher than 14,113 amperes, while the setting of the overcurrent relay for breaker E should be lower than this value to ensure that only breaker E trips for this fault. Now, let's look at a different scenario. Let's say the fault happens inside the switchyard at point F2 with only one power source feeding the network. The fault current at F2 will now be IF2 is equal to 220 into 10 cube divided by root 3 into 10, which is equal to 12,702 amperes. Therefore, for the protection of the transmission line, the setting of relay at breaker B shall be kept less than 12,702 amperes to trip immediately. But for the earlier case, we saw that the overcurrent setting of relay at breaker B should be more than 14,113 ampere to not trip for through fault, which is impractical. Therefore, overcurrent relay is not suitable here and it depends on the source impedance. Distance protection is therefore used for the protection of the transmission line. It is simple to apply and fast in isolating the faulty section from the healthy network. Distance protection provides primary as well as backup protection to the protected line. I will show this backup protection function later in this video. Distance relays measure the apparent impedance from the relay's location to a fault. This is done by dividing the voltage at the relay point by the measured current. Z is equal to V by I. If the measured impedance is less than the relay's preset value, the relay interprets this as a fault and sends a trip command to the breaker. The relay can operate directly or through a master trip relay for multipole tripping. In this figure, there are three substations, P, Q, and R, and four breakers, A, B, C, and D. The distance protection for substation P is divided into three zones, Z1P, Z2P, and Z3P. Similarly, substation R will have zones Z1R, Z2R, and Z3R. Let's begin by focusing on relay A at substation P. Zone 1 is set to cover 80% of the total line length between two substations, in this case between P and Q. Zone 2 covers 120% of the protected line length, that is PQ. Zone 3 is a bit more complicated. It's set to 120% of the total length of line PQ plus the longest line connected to the next substation Q. If substation Q has two lines, QR and QS, we take QR since it's the longer line. Now, let's plug in some values for our calculations. Distance from P to Q, 200 kilometers. Distance from Q to R, 180 kilometers. Distance from Q to S, 120 kilometers. Average impedance per kilometer, 
0.3 ohm per kilometer. CT ratio 1000 by 1 ampere. PT ratio 400 kV by 110 volts. Let's see how we calculate the impedance settings for each zone. First, we calculate the total line impedance for PQ. 200 into 0.3 equals 60 ohms. Since zone 1 covers 80% of the line length, the impedance setting will be 0.8 times 60, which is 48 ohms. But wait, we need to consider the CT and PT ratios because the relay measures voltage and current through them. Let's find the combined CT-PT ratio, which is 0.28. Now we apply this ratio to the impedance. 48 multiplied by 0.28, which equals 13.44 ohms. So, the zone 1 setting for relay A will be 13.44 ohms. If the relay senses an impedance less than this, it will trip the breaker. The time setting for zone 1 is instantaneous because we want to isolate the fault immediately. Now you might wonder, why don't we set zone 1 to 100% of the line length? This is because transmission lines are not perfectly balanced and there may be slight errors in the CTs and PTs. Setting zone 1 to exactly 100% could result in incorrect tripping for faults just beyond the protected line. By limiting it to 80%, we avoid such unnecessary trips. For zone 2, we extend the protection to cover 120% of the line PQ, which is 1.2 times 60, which is 72 ohms. Adjusting for the CT-PT ratio, 72 into 0.2, 8, which is 20.16 ohms. So, the zone 2 setting will be 20.16 ohms, and if the relay detects an impedance below this, it will trip the breaker after a 350 millisecond delay. This delay ensures that zone 1 at the remote end has time to act before zone 2 operates. Here, let's calculate the setting for zone 3, which provides backup protection for the longest remote line. Since the line from Q to R is 180 kilometers, and it's the longest line from Q, the total length we need to consider is PQ plus QR equal to 200 plus 180, which is 380 kilometers. The impedance becomes 0.3 times 380, which is 114 ohms. Now, we set zone 3 to 120% of this impedance, 1.2 times 114, which is 136.8 ohms. Adjusting for the CTPT ratio. 0.2 times 136.8 becomes 38.3 ohms. So the zone 3 setting will be 38.3 ohms and the time delay for zone 3 is 800 milliseconds. I hope you understand how zones 1, 2 and 3 were decided. Now let's see the table on the screen to understand the different zone reach of different breakers. Let's see how these zones respond during different faults. Consider a fault at 150 km from substation P along the PQ line. Both relay A at substation P and relay B at substation Q will detect this fault within their zone 1 range. Since this is a zone 1 fault, both relays will send instantaneous trip commands to their respective breakers. But what if one of the breakers, let's say breaker A, fails to trip? In that case, the relay at substation Q will immediately send a direct trip signal via PLCC to substation P to trip breaker A and isolate the faulty line from both ends. The relay B will sense the fault zone 1 because the distance of the fault from Q is 50 km which is within the zone 1 limit of B. Now let's assume the fault occurs 180 km from substation P. From substation Q, the fault is only 20 km away. So relay B will detect it as a zone 1 fault and trip instantaneously. But from substation P, the fault is outside zone 1 reach. So relay A will detect it as a zone 2 fault. Since zone 2 has a delay, breaker A won't trip immediately. If breaker B opens, the line will still be connected to substation P, meaning breaker A must trip too to fully isolate the fault. In this scenario, substation Q sends a direct trip signal to breaker A to ensure it trips immediately. If the direct trip signal fails, zone 2 protection of breaker A will activate as backup and trip the breaker after 350 milliseconds. Now let's say there is a fault on the QR line located 30 kilometers from substation Q. Relay C will detect this as a zone 1 fault and trip immediately. Relay D will sense the fault as a zone 2 fault, but it won't trip immediately. Instead, 
Relay C will send a direct trip signal to breaker D, ensuring it opens without delay. Relay A will also detect this fault within its zone 2 range, but since the fault is cleared by breaker C, breaker A won't trip unless the fault persists for 350 milliseconds. Relay B will not respond as it is a reverse zone fault. And that's how distance protection works. It's not only efficient in isolating faulty sections, but it also provides essential backup protection. The zone-based settings ensure that only the affected sections are disconnected, keeping the rest of the system running smoothly. If you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the join button to support us and gain access to exclusive perks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video on Electrology. Stay safe and keep learning.